Hey everybody, Whitney Labrie here, and happy Sunday to you. Yes, I said it, happy Sunday. And if you're new to the channel or if you haven't already subscribed, go ahead and do so so you can get many, many more quality jokes like that one on a weekly basis. This piece that I'm showing you right here is a inexpensive town square miniature side by side, and it's an item that I found at a garage sale, and because of my sick addiction to miniatures, I had to pick it up even though it is clearly broken and has several issues. Some of the issues that include a missing drawer, missing the entire top half of the mirror and the mirror itself, and it is also missing a leg on the back. But I figured that maybe at some point in my life I'd be able to rescue this and make it into something, and so that's what we're gonna do. Today we are going to do a trash to treasure, hopefully treasure, video. So let's go ahead and get started. Now the first step in the transformation is to sand this down with a pretty good grit sandpaper. I didn't show that because showing sanding is pretty boring, but I just wanna let you know that I did not try to sand it down to the grain. I just wanted to remove that shiny satin finish that's often on dollhouse furniture. Now, whenever I create a piece like this, I kind of like to envision a backstory on the piece. So that way, when I'm finished, it can kind of tell a story. So in my mind, this piece ended up somehow in a secondhand shop where somebody purchased it because they saw the potential in it and wanted to spruce it up and make it look amazing. It got sat in their garage where it likely got forgotten about for years and maybe a little damaged from just being out in the garage and things getting piled on top. Well, from there, they sold it in a garage sale. It got picked up, someone else purchased it, and went straight for finishing it and making it a cool piece, and they painted it. Sat in their house for a while till they moved where they didn't have the room for it anymore. So they put it in the back patio. Well, being outside, of course, it got a little damaged, and then ultimately they sold it as well to somebody who wanted to fix it up, where it then became a garden cabinet, and then hopefully at the end of this, that's what it will look like. Since I've only done one coat of paint, it will not take long for this to fully dry. Once it is fully dried, I'm going to take a piece of paper bag or a very fine sandpaper and I'm gonna sand down this entire piece because I definitely want some of the brown stain to shine through. Now I'm gonna add this really pretty light gray color called Elephant Gray. The purpose of this is just to add dimension and age to the side-by-side. -side. It isn't to fully cover that Key West color, that bluish color that we already used. So I'm gonna use the gray sparingly, and again, just doing one coat, and then I'm gonna set it aside to dry. In the meantime, I found this little craft bucket, and it's a perfect size to fit where the leg used to be. So I'm gonna take my really dark stain pen here, and I'm gonna go ahead and stain it and glue it to the base of the side-by-side. -side. At this point, what I'd like to do is paint on some cute little floral designs onto some different areas of the piece. And this will make it look like at some point in some transition from person to person, someone added a really cute floral and that has since, of course, slightly worn off. So I'm gonna start by taking some really dark green and a nice big bristle brush, and then I'm just going to, almost in a stencil motion, just pat on some dark green. And then this is gonna act as the background for our floral pattern, and it will also simulate dark green leaves. Now placement is really gonna be important whenever you're going to paint on some flowers like this. You really have to kind of think ahead a little bit. For me, I'm gonna cover up quite a bit of these. when. I I decorate this item. But for you, if you're gonna take the time to add the flower pattern, you might wanna definitely consider where you're gonna be adding maybe vines or dead leaves or anything along those lines whenever you're thinking about a garden piece. So just kind of keep that in mind as you're painting. Now on top of those dark green leaves, I'm just gonna add some lighter color leaves. I'm not even gonna be that worried about whether or not that dark green paint has dried or not because a little mixing will actually make it look a little bit more realistic. To make the additional leaves, I'm actually just pressing my paintbrush down and swooping forward and it almost gives it like a little teardrop effect which looks like a tiny leaf. So I'm gonna do that over all the areas where I place the dark green. Moving on, I'm gonna add a little color now and I have this really pretty bubblegum pink color that I'm gonna use. And I'm just gonna start dotting in some little flowers. And again, I'm not gonna get really detailed with the flowers because I'm gonna sand afterward to make them look aged. So a lot of the detail will be sanded away anyway, but you decide if you wanna go in and spend a lot more time on detail. But in this particular case, it isn't really that necessary. 
for the last color i'm going to use this lilac color and this is just going to be another flower and i'm just going to sprinkle in a little bit of purple throughout the pink flowers just to add a little bit more color and interest now this needs to be fully dried before I grab my brown paper bag and do my one last sanding coat on this. And then once that's completed, you can go ahead and seal it with a Mod Podge and a mat or just a regular sealer if you want to do that. I'm just gonna leave it alone for now. Now let's take a look at all of my garden stuff, which is kind of embarrassing that I have so much of this materials, but this is like all my leftovers from other projects and that I've done and from the dollhouse and all sorts of other stuff. And so I'm gonna kind of rummage through it and take out a few pieces that I think I could use on this side by side. And this is actually a really great way to get rid of like your odds and ends that you have. Also, I've got some Easter items here too that I'm going to be using. I've got some flowers and stuff here that you might recognize from the Wizard of Oz room that was in there prior to me getting that room. All right, so let's go ahead and start adding our stuff. The first thing I did here was I just kind of started grabbing some of the items that I had and started placing them around on the cabinet to try to get a feel for space and where the locations would be that would best fit the items and that helped me to gauge then where I'm going to add little trinkets or add moss or leaves as we kind of go along so that's the first thing that I did and then as you start gluing your items down the things that you have to keep in mind are the story right you want your piece to tell a story think of some things that would naturally happen when you're placing your items so for instance maybe a pot fell over because of a squirrel knocked it over maybe something fell over because the wind blew by you know not everything is going to be clean because this is an outdoor piece but of course same would go for like a kitchen hutch you know what was the person doing right before they walked away were they filling a basket with eggs and so some eggs have rolled across the counter so just think about all of that you know even in your own daily life what would your workspace look like if you just right now stood up and stepped away and so that's the kind of things that are going through my mind as I'm placing and gluing my items. For me, I tend to lean toward a messier look. I feel like it, it's more interesting. It gives you more to look at and more products to use. But for you, you may like a cleaner space, a more organized look. And so you do what feels more natural for you. And if you do that, you may be more satisfied with the outcome of what you're doing. In this bottom area here of this side by side, I wanted it to look as though some flowers have just started to grow up through there on their own without ever being planted. And a flower that enjoys growing in kind of cooler, darker areas are calla lilies, which are actually some of my absolute favorite flowers. I thought it'd be really fun to add some calla lilies growing up inside of this little side by side here. So I am using my hot glue to get down in there. I'm actually gonna do a combination of hot glue and tacky glue throughout this side by side. Usually the tacky glue is for areas that are going to be seen and then the hot glue I'm using to be able to hold these calla lilies in place inside the bottom drawer area. Now that I replaced that leg with this little bucket, I want to now make it look like there's been some growth or some moss growing up the bucket and then onto the piece itself. And so I have this little leftover piece of moss from of course other projects. So I'm just going to go ahead and glue it onto that bucket and have it look like it's crawling up this side by side. And then probably what I'll do is add a little paint also to the bottom of the bucket to make it look like it's older. From this point on, I'm just going to start packing the side cabinet with as much products and materials that I can find. So I'm going to be using leftover remnants of ribbon rolled up. I'm going to use a little twine rolled up to make it look like a twine ball is in there. Some fake floral. I'm going to sprinkle that all inside there. I've got some moss, some purple moss that I'm going to fill in some of the areas with as well. And and then I have a vase that I'm going to pop in there. So a lot of really fun little items to just really fill up that side cabinet. So now for the most part, the general items are all in place. What I would like to do now is add more Easter items because I do want this to be more of an Easter themed garden cabinet. So I do have a couple different little Easter baskets and eggs. And so now I'm going to do the same thing that I did with the cabinet originally. And that is I'm going to start kind of placing these items in different locations within the cabinet just to get an idea of exactly where I want to place them and where I feel like they'll look the best before I actually start gluing them in place. So that's what I'll do now. And then I'll start adding, you know, more moss and more natural elements into the item.
for the top, same thing. Play around with the pieces a little bit, make sure I like where they're going to be placed before I glue them down permanently. Then once I feel confident about where I'm gonna basically put the items, then I'll start adding my moss as a base and then gluing the pieces in place. I'm almost complete with this side by side, except that when I first began, I didn't really consider that I was gonna fold down that front little, I guess it's probably a writing desk, but now that I have, it feels really plain. And so what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paint the same floral design on the top of that and do the same technique that I did originally, except on the top of it now. Now that that's completed, I am going to slightly glue the door shut a little bit and I'm going to take my Elmer's clear glue and now I'm going to start smearing a small coat of it around different areas of the side by side so that I can sprinkle on some fake leaves and grime that would kind of have built up probably over time as it sat outside. This stuff is supposed to simulate just dry or dead leaves and you can really get this product online or you can get it at your local hobby store or local hobby train store if you have one of those in your city, if you have one near you. And I'm just trying to sprinkle it in areas that I think would it would have naturally gathered, which also means along the edges and the base of the side by side. So I'm making sure to put glue down there and then specifically adding some of that dried dead brush and leaves down there in those areas. Another element that I thought would kind of be fun to add is the look of maybe broken or cracked glass. I didn't actually want to cut out the plastic. I have done that in the past and I think it looks really great. But in this case, I'm just going to take my X-Acto knife and just make some cuts, some not cutting all the way through, more like scoring the front of it to give the look of broken glass. One thing I noticed when I was looking over this video is you can't really see it very well in the in the video, so I'm sorry about that, but just know that it is there. When you're looking at it in person, you can definitely see it. And so you guys, pretty much we're done. I'm just gonna add this adorable little velveteen rabbit that I have here, and I'm not gonna glue him down because I don't know if, if I necessarily want him to be permanently connected to this side by side. I'm gonna add some carrots, and then I'm going to add a few eggs onto that fold out portion of the side by side to make it look like there were, someone was working on eggs or about to hide some eggs and that they're sitting there. And now let's take a look at it when it's all finished. Yay! I'm kind of I'm kind of in love with this actually. I think it turned out pretty good. So all in all, it took me probably about an hour and a half to do this complete from start to finish. I just sat there and just went for it. Kind of forgot a little bit about filming to be honest. <laughs> so which was fun because it was just like really fun to just step right into this creative moment and then just go with it. So anyway, let me know what you think. Let me know if you have a piece in your collection that is dying for a makeover that this would work with. I'd love to hear from you as always. Always, if you haven't already, please subscribe. Go ahead and like this video, comment below, and of course, share the video. Those things definitely help the channel. I thank you so much for being here. I hope that you have a wonderful week, a very happy Easter with your friends and family, and I will see you next time. Bye!